Happy holidays. Well, yesterday, for those of us in the CMMC ecosystem, we got an early Christmas gift from old St. Boss Janik. The DOD has sent the CMMC proposed rule to the Federal Register. It's currently in preview. You all can check that out. I'll put the link in the notes, but it'll be officially published on Tuesday, December 26, 2023, day after Christmas. But for those of us that live, breathe, sleep, CMMC, we couldn't wait. We got our hands on it yesterday morning and have been combing through all 234 pages ever since. And this is what this video I'm going to be sharing with you. Just some high level reactions from myself as a certified CMMC assessor and provisional instructor. I know that you all have better things to do than to be reading through the CMMC rules. So I'm going to just let you know some key takeaways that you should be aware of, let you know how you can submit your public comments. Also let you know some actions you should take. So certainly stick around for those actionable steps I'm going to provide you at the end of this video. But let's jump right into some of the key takeaways from the CMMC 2.0 proposed rule. The good news is the DOD stated that the CMMC rule will not show up in solicitations contracts until 2026 or later. So it is going to be a phased rollout. No surprise there. We knew it wasn't going to just be overnight it's going to be in all of DOD contracts during that initial rollout of CMMC 2026 or later, we're looking at just under 1500 entities. We're going to have that CMMC DFAR 721 in their solicitations. Year two, so we're increasing and accelerating. By year three, we have to 25,000, then all the way up to year seven, where we're going to see a slight decrease. Yeah, this is their estimated timeline for the phase rollout for CMMC. Now, that doesn't mean defense contractors, you can just sit back, relax, and wait until 2026 because implementing 800 is no small feat. It tells a lot. Even if you're a small contractor, there's lots of documentation, SSP, technology. So you have to get to work. You got to get busy. The days of procrastination is, are over. DOD saying, hey, we expect you to be compliant. And even before DFAR 7021 shows up in contracts, we already have 7012. We already have 7019 requiring you to do that self-assessment and submit your SPURS score. We already have DFAR 7020 where DIPCAC assessors can perform the DIPCAC high assessments on defense contractors and subcontractors. Let's start with the responses from the DOD. <laughs> They were juicy. I had my popcorn reading through those comments like, ooh, Stacy, no, you didn't. <laughs> it's like the DOD having waiting two years to lay the smack down <laughs> with those responses. Reading through those comments reminded me of the movie War Dogs when they went to the Pentagon and was asking questions because they got awarded a big DOD contract to deliver munitions. Long story short, they significantly underbid that contract because they did not understand the requirements for shipping those munitions. Essentially reading through the DOD responses to CMMC 1.0 public comments. So it said some of the key points regarding CMMC costs, which is the next question I always get from defense contractors, how much it costs. And we'll get into a little more detail with that. But let's first look, I'll say some of the key takeaways from those responses that the DOD provided. So for starters, with the estimated costs, essentially DOD is saying that, hey, you should have already implemented any technical requirements to comply with DFARS. 7012, FAR 21, it's not factored into the cost of the CMMC program. For CMMC level one and two, it's saying, all right, they're not introducing any additional information security protection requirement. And okay, we're only requiring you to comply with 800-171, which we know DFAR 7012 requires. Next, business decision for contractors. <laughs> so they pretty much said, long story short, like, hey, you have to make a business decision if you want to do business with the Department of Defense. If you decide to do business with the Department of Defense, then hey, you have to comply with our cybersecurity requirements. And once CMMC is in solicitations, then that's going to require certifications at level two and three and self-assessment for level one. Impact on contract costs. Rule does not alter existing contract cost principles or procedures. You should factor in the cost of compliance into your bid. And so again, going back to your contract, if you don't fully understand what all DFAR 7012 or FAR 21 requires, 
then yeah, you're going to underbid on your contract. So many words with DOD is saying like, hey, don't blame us because you didn't understand the requirements. So next one with the firm fixed price contracts is market supply and demand. If your bid includes their cost for compliance with the FAR 7012, FAR 21, then hey, that's price and demand. That's how we award our contracts. So if you're underbidding your contract, again, DOD saying not our fault. Now, don't shoot the messenger. These are not my words. It takes us directly from the CMMC 2.0 proposed rules. So that's what they're saying. And my point with preventing you from wasting time by submitting your comments during the public comments period for CMMC 2.0 rule is anything related to cost. This CMMC is too expensive. How are we supposed to implement NIST 800 Or can we get extra money to do it? The DOD has already responded to those comments. So if you submit the same comments, all they're going to do is say, see our response in the rule. That's that. But again, it's pretty juicy. Uh, it's DOD. Like they have a little sass to those responses. <laughs> all right. Now I know what you all are really here for to look at these cost estimates. Now the DOD did a cost estimate breakdown for each level of how much it actually is going to cost. How much money, moolah, for you to get an assessment completed. So for level one, that's a self-assessment. On the low end, they're saying, okay, it's maybe $4,000 factoring in your labor costs to perform the assessment. That's 17 practices taken directly from 800-171. From there, you have to, a senior official will have to provide an affirmation and submit that in the SPUR system. Level two, this is where we have a big jump. Ooh, 43,000 for a self-assessment. Just to do that self-assessment, and only keep in mind, the DOD estimates only 1% of defense contractors are going to qualify for a level two self-assessment. It's going to be very few. So I wouldn't bank on you being one of those in the 1% that's going to get a level two self-assessment. But even if you are one of those lucky few, you're still looking at over $40,000 to complete a satisfactory level two self-assessment. I Meaning you're going to have to go through all 110 practices, 320 assessment objectives, document your SSP. You have a POAM. All that has to be documented. And you have to provide an affirmation. Some senior official from the organization providing that affirmation in the SPUR system, including your SPUR score from the self-assessment. So it's still going to be a major undertaking. There's just no independent verification for this level two self-assessment. Then with the level two certification assessment, the large majority of contractors that are processing, storing, or transmitting CUI likely are going to need a level two certification assessment. So if you need that independent assessment by a C3PL, that CMMC third-party assessor, you're looking at potentially over a hundred grand for the assessment and all of the requirements for that assessment. Keep in mind, this is not factoring in implementation of any technical controls, administrative controls to comply with 800-171 because from DOD's perspective, you should have already done that since 2017. So yeah, it can get pretty expensive to get that certification. And then they also factored in how much it's going to cost with the C3PO, the cost related to getting a C3PO to do the level two assessment, estimate over 200 hours, $52,000, $260 per hour for C3POs. It's going to add up. Now, with this $52,000 factoring into this 112, over half your cost to get that level two certification estimate is going to be related to getting the actual certification assessment, hiring that C3PO. So just kind of give you some hard numbers. I think they're pretty fairly accurate um, just based on my experience working with defense contractors and seeing what other C3POs are charged and CMMC assessors are charging with consulting and the RPs. Now, of course, they're going to be organizations with going to be a lot less, going to be organizations a, a lot more, just depending on the size, complexity, the uh, level of expertise they have in-house. But the DOD finally provided some hard numbers from their cost estimates. So I'm curious, what are your thoughts on these numbers? Do you have some sticker shock? Put in the comments, let me know what you, what you think. What's your response? And if you have sticker shock, I completely understand. Unless you're level one, even that can be a lot of money if you're talking about just doing a self-assessment. Yeah, every dollar counts. It's not going to be cheap for CMMC. Defense contractors, I, I feel your pain. Now, the DOD did address some cost savings. They said one of the cost savings they took into consideration and implemented is there's no requirement for defense contractors to hire a, an external consultant to complete a level one self-assessment. So with the level one self-assessment, they just have to assess those 17 practices taken directly from 800-171, directly mapped to 
R21. Pretty straightforward. There's no documentation required, but no POAM are allowed for self-assessments level one. So if you are a defense contractor that only process stores or transmits federal contract information, then hey, your burden is a lot lesser than level two. So you just have to worry about being in compliance with those 17 practices and submitting that attestation to the SPUR system. There's not even a score for level one. For DOD saying, hey, it's it's not going to cost you a lot of money to do a level one self-assessment. So for the level two certification assessments, those that are going to require the C3PO to perform, if a defense contractor fails that assessment, then there is no waiting period for them to get another assessment performed. Organizations seeking certification, they have 10 days to address any practices marked as not met during their certification. 10 days after that certification, that's their window to address any of those not met practices. The DOD currently does not have a process for requesting waivers or CMC level two, level three assessments. Pretty much the DOD will decide internally based on their policies and their needs, whether a defense contractor qualifies for a CMC level two self-assessment or some type of waiver. As an organization seeking certification, it's good you don't have any process to submit that request. If you have a dispute about how the assessment went or if uh, assessor mark practices is not met and you disagree yeah, any disputes any appeals will be submitted to the c3po that perform the assessment and they will decide on what actions to take and then if you're unhappy with their response and how they addressed your concerns then those will be escalated up to the cyber ab so the cyber ab will have the final say so It'll be the, they'll determine the final resolution for any appeals one big surprise for me is with the external service providers we got clarification from the dod on that in relation to the external service providers that organizations seeking certification are using will need a cmmc level two certification if they're processing store and transmitting cui or log or configuration data and that log and configuration data stored on their assets for the external service provider then yeah they're going to need a certification so we're looking for it's definitely still that's going to open up more questions and as far as your cloud service providers dod confirmed that they're going to need to be fed ramp moderate or high or equivalent so equivalent hey do they meet the same requirements outlined to get that fed ramp moderate or high designation so for your cloud service providers processing or transmitting controlled and classified information. Now, if you're one of those defense contractors working on a critical project for DOD and you're designated to require a CMMC level three assessment, you will need to get a CMMC level two assessment performed first before you can even do the level three that which will be performed by the DIPCAC. So essentially you're paying for that level two assessment, then the DIPCAC is gonna perform the level three to validate that you've implemented this 800-172. So in regards to compensating controls, Alternative controls, you have to get approval from DOD CIO stating that yeah, you're approved to use an, al an alternative control and that has to be documented in your SSP. I think another big takeaway was in relation to the POAM. So CMMC level two assessments, um, the DOD is only going to allow one point practices to be on the POAM. So those three point five point practices are not allowed to be on the POAM. You have to have those fully implemented in order to get your CMC level two certification. So the only two practices where you can get partial points for would be for the multi-factor authentication 3.5.3, or if you have that multi-factor authentication deployed for, let's say your privileged users, admins, then out of those five points, three points will be subtracted if you don't have multi-factor authentication implemented for all users in scope for your CMC level two assessment. We have access to that CUI, then you get two points out of five. Now, if you don't have MFA deployed at all in your CUI environment, then that's, that's going to be a minus five. And then for the FIPS validated encryption, we know this is a big one for a lot of defense contractors where this is one of the most common other than satisfied findings that um, the DIPCAC discovers during their assessments, is the FIPS validated encryption. So if you have FIPS encryption, but it's not validated, It'll be subtract three points. So you'll still get two points as long as you have that some type of FIPS encryption. But the validated is what's going to you need to get all five points. So those are only two that the DOD is allowing for partial points. 
All right, so there you have it. Really just some actionable takeaways that I want to leave you with. Make sure you review your contracts, your teaming agreements, know what clauses are in your contracts. Because just a reminder, CMMC is not implementing new information security requirements. It's going to validate that defense contractors are complying with the existing DFAR 7012, FAR 21 requirements. And I would say do not. Do not buy any technology, anything until you have done your scoping to know exactly what do you have in scope for 800 or DFAR-7012 or CMMC, however you want to spin it. <laughs> well, you need to know what you have in scope first before you start trying to remediate any gaps because I see all the time defense contractors are purchasing solutions that they don't need. Confirm what level. You need to know what level you're at before you take any action in terms of remediation.